Hey you guys, welcome back to See Me Mom. And if you are new here, welcome to my kitchen. Today I'm going to be sharing with you some recipes for super easy, simple desserts or treats, if you will. And they all have just three ingredients. So stay tuned. All right, you guys, it is the second to last day of January. So we're coming to the end of the first month of the year and Valentine's Day. I know is on the horizon, so I was thinking, you know, I don't do a lot of dessert videos on my channel. I don't do a lot of treat videos on my channel. Maybe it would be fun to do one of those with Valentine's Day coming up and just show, you know, some kind of like treats or desserts that we can all make. So I threw up a poll on my channel to see what you guys would be interested in, like budget desserts or no-bake desserts. And it seemed to be overwhelmingly in favor of the idea of a three-ingredient dessert. And I was kind of... <laughs> a little bit panicked at first. I thought, oh my gosh, what have I got myself into? But when I really started to think about it, I did have a few desserts in mind or a few treats in mind that I thought I could make and keep the ingredients very minimal. One of them we actually had this morning. It's Saturday and we have been enjoying kind of some lazy winter Saturdays. It's one of the only days when we don't have a lot going on. So it was a great morning to try out this recipe that I saw on Pinterest a few months back. It is for a three ingredient cinnamon roll. You heard that right. And I am pretty particular about cinnamon rolls like I don't care for store-bought cinnamon rolls I really don't care for the ones that come in the can there are even certain bakeries like I don't really care for the cinnamon rolls there it pretty much has to be homemade or taste like homemade in order for me to really feel like that was worth it <laughs> where a cinnamon roll is concerned so I was kind of leery of this but I thought it was a really interesting concept so this recipe uses Rhodes frozen cinnamon rolls which you can find or at least I find them in the freezer section next to where the Rhodes rolls are a stick of of butter and one box of cook and serve vanilla pudding. It has to be cook and serve, not the instant kind. And to make this recipe happen, all I did was the night before take out those Rhodes rolls and place them into a baking dish. And then I sprinkled the pudding mix over the top of that. I did not make the pudding up. I just sprinkled the mix over the top. And then I poured the butter after I had melted it over the top of that. I put it into the refrigerator overnight and then the next morning I just took them out and I let them rise. I let them proof until they were about the height of the dish. I, I let them rise to the top of the baking dish. And then I threw them into a 350 degree oven for about, it took mine about 18 minutes. It took mine just a little bit longer, you know, towards the longer end of the package directions. I took them out and then I just frosted them with the frosting that came in the package with the cinnamon rolls. And I have to tell you, these did not taste like store-bought or prepared cinnamon rolls. My kids really liked them. My husband liked them. I personally thought they were actually a tad rich. So next time I would probably only use half of a package of pudding and half of a stick of butter instead of the whole one. But I was pretty impressed with how these turned out and they really did not take any work at all. As prepared store-bought cinnamon rolls go, these were by far the best that I have ever tasted. And I feel like it kind of gives sort of a homemade feel to it to add those extra ingredients. So now I am ready to get on to some other recipes. So let me turn you around and I I'll show you what I'm up to. I am going to whip up some three ingredient cookies and you have probably heard of three ingredient cookies before but if you have not you definitely need this recipe in your arsenal especially if you have kids because I feel like this is such an easy thing to throw together like to send to school or to a bake sale or if you have company coming over all of a sudden or you need to take something to a potluck. It's just a cake mix, two eggs, and half a cup of oil. And essentially what you're doing is you're using the cake mix to make a cookie dough instead of a cake batter. So it's gonna be a lot thicker, but it's so, so easy. And I'm gonna make the basic cookies, which is just three ingredients, the three ingredients that I mentioned, cake mix, two eggs, and half a cup of oil. But I'm, then I'm gonna show you how you can kind of dress these up if you wanted to add something to make them a little bit more special. I am not even bothering to get my mixer out for this recipe. I'm just mixing it up in a bowl by hand because it's so easy to throw together. And one of the great things about this recipe too is that there's lots of options because there's so many different kinds of cake mixes. Since I am going for kind of a Valentine's Day theme, I'm actually doing two batches of these, one that is a strawberry cake mix and one that is a red velvet cake mix because you know I thought that would be pretty festive for Valentine's Day treats. And these are so easy that that my kids can make these. My daughter has made these before. In fact, I'm doing the strawberry ones right now, but my kids will probably do the red velvet ones for me later. 
they're outside playing and it's, you know, probably one of the last nice days we'll get for a little while. So I didn't want to bring them in just to make the cookies. Actually, that's why I'm filming on a Saturday. I don't normally film on Saturdays. It's kind of like our time as a family, as I, as I mentioned before, but I wanted them to get to make some of these treats with me. They're pretty kid friendly, a lot of the things that I'm doing. So I thought that we would film it today while they're home. They will make those for me later. So I'll try to get a few pictures of them making those for me. In the meantime, I'm just, you know, stirring together these ingredients and then I'm just going to roll these into balls and drop them onto a cookie sheet, bake them at 350 until they are done. I usually check mine after about eight to 10 minutes and just see how they are. And that's it, you guys. I mean, that's it. That's all there is to these. But I'll show you some ways that you can dress these up if you have some extra things on hand or you want to pick up a few extra things. Um, and it wouldn't add very much time or effort on, on your part if you wanted to make these just a little bit fancier with a few extra ingredients. Okay, so I really feel like those cake mix cookies stand on their own. Like I said, there's so many different flavor options. I've made these multiple times. Some people will just finish off with a little bit of powdered sugar, just dust some powdered sugar over the top of them just to give them kind of a nice pretty look. But I'm gonna do a couple of other things with these as well. With a few of them, I made them just a tad smaller and when they came out of the oven, I put some Hershey's hugs in the center of them and then as they cool the hugs will harden again but it makes them look kind of like those blossom style cookies that you see around Christmas time but they look a little bit more festive since these cookies are pink and red and I'm using hugs which are like white chocolate. I also have some candy wafers like some white chocolate melting wafers and I thought with a few of the cookies that once they are done cooling initially, I will pop them into the freezer for a few minutes just to make them harden just a little bit more. And I will dip them in those melted um, melting wafers, those white chocolate wafers, which I will melt in the microwave and then maybe sprinkle, you know, some sprinkles or some um, colorful sugar on top of them as well to make them a little bit more festive. I feel like popping them into the freezer helps a little bit with this process because the cold cookies will help the white chocolate to harden again just a little bit faster. Also with a few of them, I thought I might try to make the Great American Cookie Double Doozy style cookie where you pipe some frosting into the center of two of the cookies and you make like a frosting cookie sandwich. And then you can roll that in a little bit of colorful sugar as well if you want to give it a little bit of color as well. But there's just some options for you that you could use to dress these cookies up if you are wanting to go just, a, you know, the extra mile to make them just even a little bit more festive. Okay, so the story with this next recipe is that I wanted to make these three ingredient M&M marshmallow cookie bars from the Pillsbury website, but it calls for peanut butter cookie dough. And I could not find peanut butter cookie dough anywhere. And I've actually used that for another recipe. My mother-in-law makes these peanut butter blossoms where you use prepared peanut butter cookie dough and you put like little miniature peanut butter cups into little mini muffin tins and it makes these like really yummy cookies. I thought about that <laughs> for this recipe video as well, but it's a good thing I didn't choose that because I cannot find peanut butter cookie dough anywhere. I don't know if it's a COVID thing or if it's just a my area thing. I could not find it. But whenever I was picking out that recipe, I also saw another recipe that used prepared cookie dough to make s'mores cookie bars. So I thought that's what we would do. Okay, so this recipe calls for prepared chocolate chip cookie dough, a container of marshmallow cream, and this is probably about a cup and a half of graham cracker crumbs, which I just made myself from graham crackers that I had in the pantry already. So the genius of this recipe is that you're getting the s'mores flavor with just three ingredients because the chocolate is already in the cookie dough. Now I will say that I have scaled this up a tad. I think the original recipe is just supposed to be like an eight by eight or nine by nine inch pan and you use like a 16, this is a 30 ounce um, tube of chocolate chip cookie dough. I think you're supposed to use just the one pound, the 16 ounce, but I'm gonna scale this up a little bit so I'm making it just a tad different. And the reason I'm scaling this recipe up is because our intention is to give away quite a few of these treats. We might enjoy one or two of them tonight, just a little serving, and then we're gonna give a lot of them away to friends and neighbors. So first, I'm just going to take about two thirds of this tube of cookie dough and I'm gonna spread it into the bottom of the pan and up around the sides and I'm gonna reserve a third of it for later. Then I'm going to spoon the marshmallow cream over the top of that, sprinkle the graham cracker crumbs on top, and then I will crumble the rest of the cookie dough on top of that. I'm hoping that this is gonna create a bubble up effect. And then I'm going to bake it in the oven for 15 to 20 minutes, maybe a little bit longer, depending on um, you know how gooey it is in the center. 
and then it should be ready to go. So I'll show you what it looks like when it comes out of the oven. The children also put together some pretzel hugs for me. I've actually usually seen these during the holidays, like around Christmas time. You take a pretzel and you place a Hershey's Kiss or Hershey's Hug on top of it, and you put those into the oven until they get just a little bit melty, maybe just one or two minutes. And then you top them with a single M&M. I have also seen these done with Rolos. I don't think they would work with Reese's Peanut Butter Cups, but I've seen them with different kinds of Hershey's Kisses. But for Valentine's Day, I'm using the pretzel twists and the hugs because they'll look a little bit more like hearts because of the shape of the pretzel twist and then the white chocolate hug that's on top. And then using the Valentine's Day M&Ms that are, you know, the red, white, and pink M&Ms, it'll make them look kind of festive. But obviously when they cool down, the chocolate kind of sets back up. So it's a little bit more like a, you know, pretzel chocolate treat so the kids put those together for me as well. All right, that's what I have for you guys today. Thank you so much for watching. I hope this gives you some ideas for some really easy treats that you can throw together for your friends and neighbors and family and maybe some that if you have young kids that they can help you out with. So thanks so much for watching and I'll be sure to check in again with another video very soon. Bye. And about, this is probably about a cup and a half of graham cracker. Ugh. This is probably about a cup and a half of graham cracker. Blah, blah, blah. Graham cracker. <laughs> with other, with it, I got the good one too. Desire to lose. <laughs>